and welcome to my channel. Let us walk you through how to pass the best strategy for you to pass your AWS SAAC03, that's Amazon Web Services Solution Architect Associate C03, that's the latest exam on ground. So first of all, you know that there are new changes and there are updates to the exam. Do not fret, just to take it easy. Ensure you go through all the topics that are slated for the course. There are updates, there are updated topics and there are updated services. There are services that have become redundant and that have been archived and there are services that are already updated. So, to ensure that you're on track, make sure you go through the courses. There are various platforms, like there are various platforms that offer these courses, organized courses. Like you can get courses, Civil Mary courses, Neil David, Vera Dojo, Wiz Labs on their platform or on Udemy. There are as well people that offer free courses on YouTube and which you can take very advantage of. And there are sessions that offer free topics like being a solution architect, they have they have they offer these trainings for free on YouTube and on their on their site. AWS also offers trainings on Switch for free. They are par hours that you can also attend. But the best thing to do is to make sure you have a guide, the proper guide, that you ensure that you cover all the necessary topics that this exam covers. And you can get that by reading the exam guide. I'll put the link below. You can check a link to the exam guide below. If you're able to purchase a course, if you're able to purchase a course, a new Demi or Coursera, third your Wiz Lab, perfect. If you're not able to, try as much as possible to collate the free resources that are there, attend Twitch sessions, use YouTube, all those resources would be helpful to you. And when you get one, when, try to finish it off, try to go from the beginning to end, whether it makes sense to you or not. The first time when you start, when you start going through it, if you are new, to tech, it may seem strange, especially if you're new to cloud, it may seem strange to you. Be patient with yourself. By the time you go by the second time, the third time, it may start making sense to you. It may, you may start understanding it, you may start comprehending it better. So be patient with yourself when you're going through it. Make sure you understand it. And while you're at it, if it's very possible, it's always, always advised to do the hands-on lab. So as much as you can do the hands-on lab because by doing the hands-on lab, you get to understand these concepts better and if possible, try to, be, when you're curious and you try to do it in various ways, you'll be able to understand the concepts better. So by the time you see questions, because these questions, the exam questions are based, are scenario based. They are not what you just get from practice questions. They are not crammed, they are not lifted off from the document, from the white papers, they are what they are scenario based questions. So it's only when you really understand how to use these services that you'll be able to answer and understand the questions very well for you to edit it. And I'm sure you're not you're not aiming to get a 700 and fail the exam. Okay, good. Let us go to the second one. The second strategy to use to, for you to in order to pass this exam is for you to do lots and lots and lots of practices. Most of the platforms of most of the people, certified persons that offer these practice questions have updated their practice questions. Actually, if you purchased it, for example, Udemy CV Mario has updated his, Tutorial Dojo has updated his, Wizlab has updated his. So it is advisable you go through various practice questions. Do not make the mistake of just purchasing one and using it and going over it over and over again and by the time you finish maybe the six set of questions and you go over it again and you start getting 90, 80, you think that you've really done well but invariably you're just remembering from memory what the answers are. So to really test your knowledge, it is best you use various platforms but be very careful so that is not to use old practice questions, especially the ones that are redundant, because they will not help you. There are some services that have been changed. There are some services that have been modified. 
There are self, some services that have been updated. So if you are only used with the old, if you are only using the old practice questions, you may end up losing the very very key points, and which will make you not really understand. Another great strategy for you to use always, always, always as you are taking the practice questions. By the time you are going through it, tell yourself that it is okay. As you are attempting it the first time, fail the questions that you are going to fail. And then when you are going reviewing this, the solution to these questions, take your time to understand why one answer is correct and why the other one is wrong. And then most of these platforms offer links, attach links to the white papers for you to have, for you to understand these scopes and the concepts better, the services better. So do so well to follow those links to the white paper, to AWS documentation, and then do your very best to read it and understand it. And then while you're at it, by the time you've done like maybe a full set of practice questions or two sets of practice questions, it is always advisable to go back over the whole resources again that's going through the material you had used earlier to study. By doing this, you will see you get to listen how you're more drawn to points that initially you were not drawn to. You'll be able to pay more attention to points that, are, that you're hearing now than you heard initially. And by the second time, you may not bother to do the hands-on lab. You can just go over the video courses again, just taking notes of points, trying to understand the services or the concepts you did not really understand so well the very first time. So by doing this, you are you broadened your knowledge, you reinforced what you learned earlier on, also updating what you knew before. Because the first time you'll be going through it, especially if you're new to the cloud, some concepts may sound so foreign to you that you may not really pay so much attention. You will just be you will just be on the verge of finishing the course, trying to finish the course that you may not really pay so much attention to certain concepts. So by doing this, after taking some practice questions, when you're going over the resources all over again, you get to see that you have better understanding, that you grasp the concepts better. So this will go a long way to help you to understand. And by the time you finish this again, try your hands on new questions. There are platforms that offer new sets of questions. There are platforms that offer free sets of questions for you. Try your hands on different sets of questions and see the rate at which you understand it. Do not only dwell on just the same set of questions and go over it and over it again. Questions are not repeated for the course of the exams. Questions are not all usually repeated. It is what you understand from the concepts that will help you pass this exam. If you do not understand the concepts, if you do not understand the services, if you do not understand everything about this, you may go to the exam and you may be disappointed because you would hardly see a repeated question from the practice question. So do not make the mistake that you are expecting to see repeated question. If you get to see, that's your luck. If you don't get to see, then by the time you take these strategies, you read, you practice question, you go and read again. And the last but the very most important thing, one of the very important things, is for you to network. In addition, I would advise that you do the practice test after the first two practice tests in review mode. This will help you to be able to address questions instantly as they come. You don't have to wait to the end. Now, some platforms offer this, like WizLab. Udemy doesn't offer this. And then if you're able to get your hands on practice questions that have the questions and then the answers immediately, this will really help you while you're also reading the resources from the beginning to the end. Good luck as you try this. Let's work with people. By the time you join forums, you can connect with people that are learning, planning to take these exams, or those that are already taking it. You can connect with people on LinkedIn, you can join forums or groups on Slack, or WhatsApp, any platform, Discord, those that are planning to take this exam. Why this is very useful is that people get to share resources. People get to share ideas, people get to share questions, people get to ask questions in different ways. And 
by the time someone asks questions, you may also have had the same question, or you may not even, your attention may be drawn to that. And by someone else asking that question, you may try to answer that question. And in that, by doing so, you'll be able to understand that concept better. Or when another person offers the solution or offers the answer to that question, you'll be able to understand it. So also, you'll be able to connect with people like I was very lucky by connecting with people, I got to have access to various materials. I got to gain access to various materials, to gain access to various platforms for me to be able to practice. I had wealth of practice questions and that really helped me a lot. So networking with people is very good. Not only will you get resources, you also get motivated, you also get encouragement and you will also get to make very new friends by meeting amazing people that you, you don't even know where it will lead you to tomorrow so joining people joining groups joining forums networking is very very key for you to be successful in this because it will give you bigger range a wider range of opportunities wider range of platform for you to excel so with all these strategies by the time you apply the strategy do well to leave your comment section Leave in the comment section your success story or how you feel after taking these strategies. A recap of the strategy. First of all, you go through the course material. Then, as much as possible, do hands-on lab on all the concepts that you can. That's on the free tier if you can't afford to pay for you to do some of the services that are not on the free tier. Just do the hands-on lab for just the free tier. Then, start practice questions. And when you're done with about three or four sets of or four number of different practice questions, go over the resources again this time around without hands-on lab. And when you're done with hands-on lab, start new set of practice questions. Finally, network with people, share resources with people, ask people for resources, connect with people, ask those that have passed this exam for guide. Also encourage others, encourage yourself, encourage your friends and set your exam dates. By the time you set your exam date, that would really encourage you. You can actually do this, it may seem, but do not fret, do not be afraid. You got this and I trust you. See you in the winning side. Take care.